Good morning, everybody. This is a live severe weather briefing as the threat, and including the threat for tornadoes, has shifted to the east. Now it's focused across the southeastern U.S., including eastern Georgia, a large portion of the Carolina, Piedmont, including South Carolina and North Carolina. There's already been some tornado warnings already this morning just to the east of the Atlanta area. Right now there are no active tornado warnings, but I do expect that by late morning there's likely going to be a resurgence of those tornado warnings. Short-range models are definitely showing uh, the uh, propensity for prefrontal supercells, renegade supercells here. This is the tornado threat all along that line where there could be tornadoes embedded within a QLCS type of a pattern along a squall line, but really the tornado threat is going to be focused with these renegade storms developing out ahead of the line across central South Carolina into southeastern Georgia, but it does look like uh, a big time wind event, damaging wind event, is definitely a certainty across this area, even if uh, the tornado threat uh, does not materialize. But I do think that with those 1500 capes, a southwesterly low level jet of about 50 knots, even though it is parallel to that advancing frontal boundary, there is so much cape and surface based instability out ahead of this front that I think those prefrontal supercells are going to be turning to the right, increasing that storm relative helicity of the low levels, and likely uh, producing tornadoes. Here is the parent trough that is causing this severe weather and also caused the severe weather yesterday. Uh, we were chasing uh, in southern Mississippi and around a couple tornado worn storms, including one that produced a tornado just to the north of the Raleigh area. That one roped out on approach to our position, or else we would have been in per perfect position to intercept that tornado. Now the upper level trough is beginning to gain a neutral tilt. Here is the trough axis, roughly. Uh, this is definitely a very potent upper level trough. It's brought some snow into South Texas, even in the Austin area, had quite a bit of snow. So there's a, a ton of cold air aloft, as would be expected during the winter with an upper level storm system like this. Uh, the severe weather threat today is going to be over the southeastern U.S., a little bit displaced from the very stronger uh, from the strongest winds aloft at the mid and upper levels uh, and a little bit uh, displaced from the more Meridiano flow. There is just a little bit of southwest to northeast mid-level flow here. That's uh, veered just enough because of this ridge off to the southeast. Um, that is causing the upper level winds to veer just enough to bring a supercell threat uh, to, to have a storm motion that is sufficiently to the right uh, to get a, a, a low level shear. Uh, for even a, t a tornado threat, you could even have a strong tornado or two today, uh, especially with those dominant right moving supercells. But this trough is definitely <clears throat> at its peak intensity as it's gone from a positive tilt yesterday to a neutral tilt today. And we'll be transitioning to even a slight negative tilt as we go through the afternoon. And that's why there is an enhanced risk for severe weather across this target area. Eastern Georgia, the Carolina Piedmont, as far north as uh, South Central North Carolina even, uh, there could be a pretty substantial tornado threat. And the reason there is such a big uh, a tornado threat is because of the strong low-level jet. Here uh, are the 850 millibar winds forecast by about 2 to 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, and you can see that southwesterly low-level jet in excess of 50 knots. So that's creating a low-level shear vector. That's about 30 to 40 knots in length. I'm going to show you uh, the, the hodograph, the forecast hodograph for the Augusta Georgia area, which would be my target uh, today out ahead of this line. Right now we are in uh, the Mississippi area. Uh, Southern Mississippi along I-20. Uh, I'm going to be heading back west toward the Colorado Rockies to cover that three feet of snow that's happening in the, the Rocky Mountains. And it looks like a very active pattern for Dixie Alley ahead as well around the February 12th or 13th time period. There's another big system that's going to be ejecting across this region that I'll chase. And then a big trough is taking over the western U.S. as we have an incredibly active pattern uh, going through uh, the middle part of February. But this low-level jet here across, ahead of the front across eastern Georgia uh, through the Carolina Piedmont. Let me get rid of my bowling ball head here. There you can see the low-level jet. It is strongest to the north up in North Carolina. There you've got a 60 to 70 knot low level jet. The kinematics are strongest up there, but the instability axis is going to be like this across southeastern Georgia, central and eastern South Carolina into a far southern North Carolina. That's where the greatest surface base instability is going to reside. The threat for those renegade supercells is greatest to develop initially across southeastern Georgia and then move across central and eastern South Carolina as we go into the uh, middle to later portion of the afternoon. 
and you can see that the low level jet lags well to the south you've got a, a low level jet in excess of 50 knots all the way down into northern florida so i wouldn't be surprised to even see a couple of supercells or uh, tornado warnings pop up across northwest florida as well later on this afternoon uh, and there is just enough veered flow aloft at the 500 millibar level as we just showed you uh, in that pattern because of that uh, uh, anti-cyclone off to the southeast that that is creating just enough directional shear uh, to get a storm motion that's sufficiently right uh, to have some pretty robust low level shear with this deal with this system here's the energy helicity index and the lowest kilometer and uh, that combines cape across the entire layer and wind shear across the lowest kilometer here and this shows you how that instability axis noses in to far south central north carolina uh, but the greatest combination of those parameters low level shear and the instability is going to be in this region central south carolina into uh, east central georgia uh, this is where i uh, found uh, cherry picked the uh, hodograph that we're going to break down here in a little bit But first, well, I also want to show you the forecast storm mode. So this is the HRRR uh, composite reflectivity. It's a good, good tool to look at uh, the anticipated storm mode. And what is most concerning about this are these clusters of renegade supercells that develop out ahead of the front. And these are the ones that I think are going to have the greatest tornado threat uh, as we go into the afternoon. There's also going to be a tornado threat within this line as well. You can see how broken and blotchy it is. That's going to be a QLCS or quasi-linear convective system that moves from west to east across the area. And there certainly could be some tornado warnings embedded within that line as well. At the very least, though, there's going to be a widespread damaging wind event. If you don't get caught by one of these renegade supercells, the line will get you with the damaging uh, a wind threat. So that's why uh, as those warnings are issued, you certainly want to get into an interior rumor closet, get away from windows. Uh, because mixing down those 60, 70 knot winds from aloft hitting the surface, those are going to cause some damage and could be, could be quite, quite dangerous today. Now I'm going to break down the radar quickly. And again, the model imagery that I've been using during this briefing is from Pivotal Weather. And uh, the reason I'm breaking down radar is because we do have another tornado warning here. And uh, this one includes the Athens area. There is that supercell right now uh, that is in progress, a tornado warning that includes Athens, Georgia here. There you can see that rotation, which is down near Watkinsville. It is to the south of Atkins. Uh, this circulation is going to pass from Watkinsville all the way to Winterville there. It looks like it's going to miss uh, this, the, the for a majority of the downtown Athens area. There is the outer loop there. Uh, that certainly could uh, be impacted by this uh, tornado tornadic storm as it lifts off to the east northeast this is a big inflow zone on this storm as well so it's taking in a lot of inflow right now it's pulling in that streamwise vorticity that we're going to break down on the hodograph uh, that is representative of this area you can see the uh, rear flank downdraft is dropping south on the back side right here You've got those uh, inflow winds. Watkinsville, you're likely getting some big southeasterlies now into this developing circulation. You might even see a wall cloud on the southwest side of town. And this is going to move northeast toward Winterville, Colbert, Cormer areas there. And look at that thing intensify. This is definitely a dangerous storm. Uh, the couplet is beginning to pivot as well. So it's not just convergence, but it's starting to pivot and is indicative of that uh, rotation here. You've got a lot of inflow as well out ahead of the circulation. So this is certainly a dangerous storm as it lifts off to the northeast. I'm going to show you the reflectivity there. Textbook bean shape to this supercell. You really want to look for that those uh, the bean shaped storms here with these renegades those are the ones that have a cyclonic mesocyclone aloft you also want to look for that tight gradient on the southeastern side of the storm and the reflectivity here uh, that shows that there's strong inflow into this storm you've got a couple little showers off to the southeast of it but they're not a big deal with these uh, tropical like soundings you don't get a lot of evaporation of cooling from those little showers they're usually absorbed by these dominant renegade storms like this. But definitely if you live in the Athens area, especially the south side of town, certainly get in your safe place. You can see that supercell mature and then turn a little bit to the right in those last few scans. That's 
shows that that's a dominant supercell storm that's probably uh, producing some tornadoes. It is heading toward the Winterville area. You want to be in your safe place, Winterville, Colbert, certainly. But that is a uh, dangerous storm there that's moving to the northeast. The tornado warning does include Athens, but it looks like that circulation is going to pass just to the south of the Athens area. And I'm going to pull up a representative photograph right now, or a sounding, and, and the sounding, to show you what uh, the shear profiles look like ahead of this storm. And here's the forecast photograph. And one thing that pops out on this photograph is the very elongated 0 to 1 kilometer shear vector. Here is the 1 kilometer wind approaching 60 knots out of the south-southwest. And that's a pretty backed shear vector, very south to north oriented. And that means that the trough to the west is definitely intensifying or reaching peak intensity. Once they shear out and have passed their prime, that is when uh, you, be you begin to get those really straight line photographs, a more veered low level jet. But this one is still a uh, very impressive low level jet. The surface winds there are about 20 knots out of the due south, uh, creating about 40 knots of 0 to 1 kilometer shear. And if you get a right mover, more of a due southwest to northeast, like we're seeing right now, even over in this storm motion for a few scans, you're getting a critical angle that's approaching 45, 50 degrees out there, which is more than sufficient uh, to take in enough streamwise vorticity with a shear vector that's 40 knots in length like that. You don't have as much of an elevated mix layer today, but I suspect that across the open warm sector, there's a lot more dry air coming in at the mid-levels, creating those breaks in the clouds and allowing that instability to develop. And you've got southwesterly winds at 100 knots at the upper levels of the atmosphere. That's uh, bringing this storm motion back to the right, and that increases the low-level uh, helicity substantially uh, between that storm motion vector and the hodograph curve. And look at the uh, directional shear and the speed shear in the low levels there. Definitely is an impressive tornado setup today, not just a uh, straight-line wind event. Going back over to uh, the radar here, you can still see that tornado warned storm for the Athens area and this is the first of many tornado warnings that are going to impact eastern Georgia into uh, central South Carolina and there's even a tornado warning now up in South Carolina that's just been issued this is to the west of Charlotte here that's kind of a line echo wave pattern type of a configuration there you can see that dangerous storm This is near Lawndale, North Carolina, Falston, North Carolina. You want to be in your safe place. It's going to pass to the north of the Cherry Cherryville area, and you can definitely see the inflow into the notch of this system right here. Dangerous uh, storm system here, almost a line echo wave pattern type deal. Uh, the tornado is probably located between Pol or just to the east of the Polkville area, heading to Bellwood, Falston as well. A dangerous storm so there's two active tornado warnings right now across the target area one in far southern uh, North Carolina where you're getting more of a line echo wave pattern to the west of Charlotte and then you've got uh, a traditional supercell storm here in Athens that's going to be passing just to the south of the Athens area right now I'm in uh, southern Mississippi uh, we were going to drive all night, but just couldn't quite make it out there to cover southeastern Georgia. So my plan is to double back west and cover some of these, the snow events in the Rocky Mountains where there could be up to three feet of snow there with a big time moist northwesterly flow. Big systems coming in as well. I'll break down the models with that additionally, but right now I'm focused on the severe weather threat in the southeast and especially this tornado warning near Watkinsville. Now this uh, storm is moving rapidly to the northeast toward the Winterville area. Let's look at and see if there is a correlation drop with this storm. Not seeing anything that pops out just yet. But these storms like this can produce very quick tornadoes that sometimes can hop below the radar just a little bit. 
And again, that tornado warned storm is passing just to the east now of Athens over the Winterville area. Colbert, Comer, you definitely want to be in your safe place as well. And again, this is just the beginning of this severe weather outbreak and uh, you can already see all these prefrontal renegade storms starting to develop this line of storms has moved off the foothills and will continue off to the east and then i expect those renegades to come out of eastern georgia into central south carolina as we go later on through the morning and especially into the early afternoon so stay safe if you're if you live in this target area uh Definitely check out the Facebook supporter platform. I do these uh, daily briefings, breakdown of case studies, live storm chasing streams every single day. And I hope that everybody stays safe in the path of these dangerous storms.